You know, it's pretty amazing how everything oh, works together in the body. You know, we're told by scriptures that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. But also in our body, there's flesh, there's nerves, there's drips from the roof, <laughs> there's the cold, there's our fingers, there's our skin, there's bone, there's blood supply, there's nerve endings. There's all these things that come together to cause us to be who we are. Sometimes those things get out of kilter. And I know today, for me, ouch, <laughs> I threw my back out. So what am I doing sitting? It's like I should be laying down in a bed, you know, flat prone, you know, and trying to get the muscles to, you know, stretch out, you know, and then to get the other muscles to, you know, tighten up where they're supposed to be to hold the muscles in place so that they hold the vertebrae in place and yada, yada. <laughs> but sometimes we cause those things to happen ourselves. Like for me, my wife says, you know, that I... When we went out dancing, you know, we always go out dancing on the weekend. That when I went out dancing, that with her, that I danced more this time than I usually do. I'm kind of old, so I get winded real easy. And I'm a pretty good dancer. And I uh, admit that I don't quite give in to my age as I should. So I get winded easy. So, you know, I dance a dance, you know, and then rest, and then dance one, and rest, and dance, and rest. And uh, apparently, also over the weekend, my uh, office chair that I used to have broke. So I had to get rid of it, and I didn't have a chair that supported my back. So I had been working a little bit, working on things, you know, on the internet and the websites, and trying to get this uh, portal then for Biblical Christian Network. And uh, between the combination of all these things, and not taking care of my back, <laughs> I threw my back out again. And uh, it's amazing how easy that is to do when you get older. Is that if you are not on a consistent exercise program where you tighten up your abdominals, your back will go out regularly. Or if you have, you know, God forbid, but you know, if you if you put on a few pounds like most of us do when we get older, and you haven't kind of like gotten the muscles to you know compensate for it, you go your back out pretty easy. And uh, I went out and bought a chair, and I was just lifting, well, maybe 10 pounds, but I had to reach far forward, and when I lifted it up, bingo, back went out. So, a little bit touchy today, you know. The pain is considerable, and, you know, I don't have any pain meds, so we tough it out. But the amazing thing is that in order to compensate for your back, you tighten up your abdominals. Which is interesting to me because if you know, you know, the muscle system, then it's, to you it's no problem. But most people don't realize that because they don't study medicine or they don't have a concept that all these things work together. That you have to have blood flow to the muscles, that you have to have return from the muscles because the muscles sometimes excrete, you know, from the cellular level, all this gook, you know, that's maybe you could say CO2 or something, but, you know, whatever it may be. But, um, has to dispensate things or dissipate that and it gets into the blood system and it goes to your kidneys and you get rid of it and you urinate, whatever. But the point being is that if it's not all working together, you'll throw your back out. <laughs> That's kind of what God does, you know, in the body of Christ, is that we should all be working cooperatively together and often you'll see things not working the way they should because sometimes somebody will have something off kilter or out of sync, you know, and it's not working coordinated together. But God can use that anyways, because he seems to have the ability to take that which is crooked and make it straight, and that which is straight and make it crooked. Even the scripture says that, who can make straight that which he has made crooked, and who can straighten that which he, what, who can make crooked that which he has made straight? Good question. <laughs> God did it. I don't think anybody can. But for me, whenever I get in severe pain, 
you know, and suffering, then I try to find something that emotionally causes me to get out of going into, you know, like a spiraling depression or, you know, sadness or sorrow or feeling pity for yourself or whatever those stupid emotions are that you kind of go downhill when you have pain. And one of the things was to pick out my, my sweats. <laughs> How do you like them? Red and green. My wife says, you look like a Christmas tree. <laughs> I said, now wait a minute. This is probably a soccer sweat, you know, from overseas because I bought it in Jerusalem. And the miracle part is that not only did I buy it in Jerusalem, but I bought it 11 years ago. And it still fits. <laughs> and I like them. See, it's got like this little kind of, kind of like Puma thing. You know, although it's not a Puma, it says Salen, Salenzinger, Salenzinger, something like that. But I know I was so thrilled at the time when I was in the market in the old city in Jerusalem, you know, and I saw all these things I wanted to buy. Like I wanted to buy, you know, these shirts that were, you know, real thin, you know, because over there, you know, material you wanted to win to blow through, you know, because it's so hot. But um, the only thing I ever wound up buying there was, uh, I wound up getting my uh, thermals, my thermals, my uh, sweats. So I was glad when I just went in the closet and I said, you know, I pulled them out, you know, and I haven't gone jogger or nothing and put them on. I said, you know, it's kind of neat, you know, 11 years now and it's still going. You know, it reminded me of that scripture that talks about in the desert how the children of Israel wandered 40 years in the desert and their sandals didn't wear out which reminds me of another thing when I went to Jerusalem another way that God works all things together for good to those that love the Lord and are calling to his purpose when I went to Jerusalem I left a friend of mine had left the church and gone to YWAM and he was like overseas someplace you know I guess in Colorado and nobody had heard from him in months well and I wound up going as a missionary at large to Jerusalem. And suddenly, I was going through the old town. I was at, staying at the Petra Hostel, and there he was, right in front of me. And it was like, wow. So we, you know, we hugged and we visited and stuff, you know. And it was impossible that we should have run into each other, but we did because God brought us together. And it was amazing, you know, to because he didn't know that I was going to Jerusalem, and he didn't know that he would wind up there, and we wound up there, and we, you know, had some adventures together, and it was great for a couple of days, anyways. And believe me, a day in Jerusalem is like a year in the outside world. Things happen fast, and tons of things going on constantly. People from all over the world. I mean, it's like the center of the world is right there in Jerusalem. And yeah, I don't know how to explain it except you live there, you know. Tourism, it's like, okay, yeah, it's good to visit, but, you know, once you live there, oh, it's a whole different world. But anyways, so when we visited, when before we parted company, I gave him my fedora. I had a fedora hat that was really nice, you know, and uh, pretty special to me. And he gave me these sandals that were, you know, pretty cool. You know, and I didn't know how cool they were. And, you know, we, we'd blessed each other and blessed the gifts, you know, and thanked each other and stuff. And, I still have the sandals. And you go, well, okay, so you put them in a the closet. No, you see, not only do I have the sandals, but I wear them when I go hiking in rivers and streams. They have been in the ocean. They have been in the streams. They have been all over the place, in mountaintops, in Alaska. They have been in places that you would not take sandals and wear them. I have worn them, and they have not worn out. <laughs> It's amazing. <clears throat> and that's kind of like you and I. You know, until it's time, we aren't going to wear out. We'll wear down, but we won't wear out. Because God has put a blessing on our life, on your life, on my life. You know, and until it's time to go home, hey, you know, the body parts may be wearing down, you know, and they may be getting old and kind of. Some of you may have replaced it, but there are parts of you that will never need replacing. And that's your soul and your spirit. You know, because your spirit will return to God with your soul in tow. And even if you're in pain today and you're suffering, you know, rejoice. Because in some ways, it's okay to hurt, to be still, to be sad, to be down and out. Especially when you don't feel good. 
And like I always tell my wife, when I don't feel good, I let her know. I said, honey, I don't feel good. Honey, I don't feel good. And after about 30 times, she gets a message. I don't feel good. <laughs> so today in daily life, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. I forgot prosperity, and I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, castest not off forever. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. In a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Back thrown out, but I'm still here. <laughs> and so are you. So praise the Lord. Fear not, O oh my soul, for I shall yet praise him. Whatever it is that you go through, even when you don't feel like it, just recognize it's okay. Sometimes it's okay to be down. Sometimes it's okay to be out. Sometimes it just takes time. So give yourself some time. God will come through. When the poor and needy seek water and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? And what hath man of all of his labors and of the vexation of his heart? Wherein hath he labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. All is vanity and vexation of spirit. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. As the Lord shines his countenance upon you today, as he causes you to think of him in some special way, like when he provided these sweats for me in my sandals, recognize that God always, no matter how distant you may feel at times, will not forsake you. <coughs> he has promised he will comfort you, even as I know my back will heal. Once you've been through enough circumstances with God, then begin to recognize that because he's brought you this far, he's taking you all the way. So don't panic and don't worry and don't say, where is the Lord my God who give his songs in the night? But rather, take a moment or two and give yourself the opportunity to suffer, because you will. Pain is meant for suffering. It reminds us to slow down and not try to dance too much like I did or do too much like I do, but it tells us that it's okay to be still, to calm down, to quiet down, to relax as it were, and to let God be in control, <laughs> which is hard for us to do, and recognize that he's got the whole world in his hands and you don't. <laughs> you just need to find yourself in his plan as one part of the body, not the entire body. 